Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. It's the 9th of February, and yes, I have a new screen. Uh, Dell were very kind to help me replace the one that I bought last year that had a lot of issues. It didn't detect between pen and touch, had those weird arrows that you couldn't get rid of. There were some issues with it. So they helped me get a new one. So super, super happy. Lots of fun uh, whiteboarding to do. As always, I have the chapters. So you can jump to any particular update you care about the most. New videos this week. So I dived into the detail when I think about intra, so within a region resiliency. Some of the key considerations, making sure you don't introduce some single point of failure beyond what you want as part of your architecture. And then I looked at the Azure Carbon Optimization area of the Azure portal, so I can understand my carbon footprint of my Azure workloads, and then steps I can do to reduce it. On to what's new. So Azure File Shares now support an NFS mount from the Linux app service. Remember, Azure Files supports both SMB and NFS. I, I pick one of those things. SMB had been there already, but now for my Linux app services, I can go ahead and perform an NFS mount against Azure Files. So that's gonna be really useful when my app service wants some persistent storage. This could be maybe it's just for media, images and videos it wants to access. Maybe there is some other requirement of persistent storage. Maybe I need it shared between different applications. Whatever it is, I can now very easily leverage uh, Azure files via NFS. On the networking side, so there's a new network insights topology as gone GA. Now this isn't particularly interesting in my environment, but if I'm looking at Azure Monitor, and I'm looking at my networks area, I have this topology option. And what I can do from here is, well, just dive into my topology. So maybe I'm more interested in South Central. I can see the peering connections I have. I can see the different virtual networks I have within the region. Maybe I expand this out. Then I can again go and see the connections between them. Maybe I'm interested in a particular virtual network. And for all of these things, I can go and click on detail around them, and it can even help me do sort of some troubleshooting. So here I can see if I dive in and look in a bit more detail, well, I can see there's a whole bunch of resources. I could click on a particular, so I've got my demo VM. Hey, I can see it's health status, metrics around it. I could get additional insights and diagnostics. So really the goal of this is to just help me understand more about what's happening in my topology, and then actually give me next steps, maybe go and troubleshoot, just understand more about what's going on. Then on the storage side, so UltraDisk is now available in Canada East. Remember, UltraDisk is that lowest, I think it's half a millisecond latency, separate IOPS and the throughput I can configure, and I can dynamically change that. So now available in an additional region. Azure NetApp Files now has the ability in US Gov regions to upgrade to the standard network features. So if before I had kind of those basic that didn't support all of the different capabilities of the networking, larger scale, I think it was like UDRs, NSGs, I can now upgrade to support those standard network features. And I have the ability to edit existing Azure NetApp Files volumes. And then, App consistent snapshots are now available for premium SSD V2 and UltraDisk. Remember, premium SSD V2 is more like UltraDisk in that it has those separate IOPS and throughput uh, dials from the capacity. And again, I can dynamically change them. Really the big difference is UltraDisk can go to higher performance and it has, again, that kind of sub half millisecond latency while we think of the premium SSD V2 as sub millisecond latency. Um, but now those at consistent snapshots, what they're gonna do as part of creating that restore point, well the restore point is the VM configuration and a snapshot for each of the connected disks at the same time. And because it's at consistent, well if it's Windows, it's gonna leverage that volume shadow copy service within the OS to flush everything out to disk, quiesce, pause any changes, so I get it application consistent. 
If it's Linux, it's gonna use those pre and post scripts to again, make it consistent. Uh, now, I can still do crash consistent, which is where I don't use the in guest agents or scripts. So it's just as if I, they would be consistent at the same time, but it's not flushing things out to disk. It would be like I just pulled out the power and then connected again. So I have those choice, but now I can use that at consistent on the premium SSD V2 and the ultra disk. So that's really useful if I want to be able to have those point in times and ensure it's at consistent. And then on the database side, so, um, Azure Data Explorer, I can now switch from my VNet injected configuration to a private endpoint. So I'm gonna have a migration process. It's very minimal downtime. It's a very simple thing to do. I can do it through the Azure portal. I can do it through an ARM template. I can do it through sort of CLI, etc. But now I can switch, well, I don't wanna use that injection into a subnet. Instead, I want to use a private endpoint so I can perform that migration. And on the miscellaneous side, so Windows 365, I can now use Control Alt Delete uh, to shut down my cloud PC like we're used to locally. And also there's some new fully qualified domain names that I need to be able to communicate to. So what they've basically done is they've moved to the wildcard, so wildcard.infra.windows365.microsoft.com. So that's what all of the initial configuration requirements are gonna be around in terms of that connectivity. Um, for Gub, it's wildcard.infra.windows365.microsoft.us. So just make sure I can get to those endpoints as part of any network allow list I have. And that was it. Quick update this week. As always, I hope this was useful and I'm looking forward to going and playing on my brand new board. Take care.